We are in a new era of war. I kind of think back to the days of the War of Independence when one of the ways we were able to overcome the British who wore their bright red coats and stood in an open field is that, well, we, we, we employed subterfuge and we hid and we, we em employed different means. And I feel as though conflict has gone through an, an evolutionary process where now it's not just, it's not what we remember from Vietnam. It's not World War I, World War II, any of that. Now we're in cities and we're in the United States and we're seeing it in schools and uh it's 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 new yeah and I use the word Dana <clears throat> dispersion uh, to to describe what we've seen with radical Islam and radical Islam is the challenge of our time and we've seen it disperse from Al Qaeda into Boko Haram Al Qaeda you name it but I got to tell you, you mentioned the American Revolutionary War I'm reminded of that's the reason we have a federal government the the the, the reason the states came together to create the federal government was for one reason only and that was to provide for the common defense of the American people. First and foremost is national security of this country. And we've gutted our national security. We have an army that now goes to back to pre-World War II levels in terms of strength. We've got more admirals and we've got ships. We've sent all the wrong signals. We've had open borders. They have flooded into this country. Uh, James Comey, I believe, was a good guy, the FBI director, has told us now for several months that he has open files in all 50 states of America looking at people with potential connections to ISIS. And we learned in the last couple of days that, oh, by the way, they have a thousand active probes in the ISIS, a uh, uh, thousand active ISIS probes in this country. And Dana, I go back a couple years before his predecessor, Robert Mueller, and this is disturbing. He testified to Congress a few years ago that we captured in one year alone, I think it was, I think it was 2011, 59,000 people from countries other than Mexico illegally trying to come into this country. And those countries included Yemen, Somalia, Pakistan, Iran, and Syria. Let me tell you, they were not coming as part of a church mission outreach program to this country. They were coming to do harm. And my question tonight is, where are the ones we didn't catch? Where are they in America tonight, and what are they doing? Exactly. And, of course, we wouldn't, I think it's fair to say, we wouldn't even be having this concern with the influx and, and these open cases that you just mentioned had we a stronger foreign policy the, the past decade, a stronger foreign policy that, uh, for the lack of a better way to put it, killed this threat in its crib, went to where it is, and prevented the infection from <clears throat> spreading. You know what's really sad? Back in 2010, we had 90% of ISIS's predecessor organization, 90% of their capability wiped out. General Lloyd Austin at the time was the ground commander in Iraq. He's now the CENTCOM commander. And I, I mentioned this in my book. He urged the president, please leave a small residual force so it would not reconstitute itself. The president did not listen to him, and now he's got a much bigger problem on his hands. He has a cancer that is spreading. The caliphate, one-third of Syria, one-third of Iraq, and I'm sorry, it's not contained. It's here in this country. Look what happened in Chattanooga. And political correctness, by the way, is killing us. I go back to Nadal Malik Hassan, the Fort Hood terrorist. He had 18 emails of, of, between him and the head of al-Qaeda in Yemen the FBI intercepted and we did nothing because of political correctness. Political correctness is killing us. What can we do in terms, I mean, we, I would imagine that we need to do quite a bit because we're, we're, we would be playing catch up, hopefully, and we can make that happen <clears throat> in 2016. I know that you've written in your book the need to upgrade our missile defenses. Uh, we need greater protection from cyber yeah. attacks. That's just the beginning. Yeah, and you know, I got to tell you, Dana, I'm a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army, but I got to tell you, when I was doing the research for the book, I, I didn't realize that we have no land-based missile defense capability on the entire east coast of the United States. And now we just cut a deal <clears throat> with Iran where we're going to let them move forward at some point with intercontinental ballistic missile development. Uh, and like I said, we've gutted the U.S. military. And I believe that cyber warfare, cyber warfare is the one threat that we are the most unprepared for. It's killing us economically and from a national security standpoint. And this is key. I distinguish between what the radical Islamists are doing and what the Chinese are doing. The Chinese are more about espionage. They're trying to steal our, 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 our secrets, business and national security. The radical Islamists are about sabotage. They're trying to take down our systems. Each requires different countermeasures. And one of the things I call for, we need about 30,000 true cybersecurity experts in America tonight to thwart the worst kind of attack in this country.